special guest, Miss Jazz Colburn from Killing Joe. What are these cameras doing in my face all of a sudden? Welcome back to another episode of Undead from Antarctica. Oh, Undead from Antarctica. So we're, we're doing that whole thing again. Yeah. Has it already been a week since we did the last one? <laughs> Jesus, it's a monthly show. I told you that last time. And no, it hasn't been a week. It's been five weeks. Five weeks? I'm not sure, but I think that's like more than a month. Y yeah, I, I had to take some time off because I heard that a comet is headed towards the Earth. It'll be here November 2nd. Ooh, a comet. Is this one finally going to destroy the planet? <laughs> we can only hope. But if it doesn't, I'm pretty sure that World War III is going to start the next day. Uh, November 3rd. I'll mark my calendar the day the shit hits the fan. Got it. Yeah, well, either way, I'm out of here because I got my bag packed and I'm on the next space rock headed into deep space. Deep space. Yeah, sweet. So, uh, so who should I get to host Undead from Antarctica with me? Didn't you hear me? The world will either be destroyed or at war. I don't think anyone is going to be watching our stupid little web show. Oh, right, right. So, um, so I'll get, I'll get Bone Snapper. Right. Let's just answer some fan mail. Yeah, let's go to the mailbag. <laughs> Welcome to Putsy's Mailbag, where we answer the viewer mail. Let's see what the mail is. What kind of letters do we have today? Yep. So I thought that we were getting all this stuff email. Oh, it's a cell phone. Hey, it's already got email on it. All right. Terry Mann asks, it just came in. <laughs> Why are two-thirds of Guar's board games so fucking hard to understand? Not all of us are ballsack. Because you guys are dumb. Ballsack is smart. Right. That's correct. The one that is easy to learn isn't even official. So you're admitting you steal from us. You you take the food out of Ballsack's child's mouth. Man, that's uncool. Why would you do that? Why would you do that to my baby? My little tiny baby. We're not all smart fucks like Ballsack and Bothar. Bothar is a smart fuck. I don't know who Bothar is. He's a smart fuck. We need easy games, like give us fucking guar pogs or some shit. Guar pogs. I think I'm going to bootleg my own little guar pogs. <laughs> All right. More games for idiots. We're on it. <laughs> well, send in your stupid and dumbass questions to whatever this says. Pusty's mailbag at gmail.guar.com.net.org. And maybe I'll answer them. Yeah, not confusing at all. And now, Deep States with Swab. Earth not round like coin. Earth flat like coin. Sometimes both sides right. Right? Maybe no. Clawbird or wiggy grandma? Call it. Wow! 
30 years ago, the world was rocked to its very core by the release of an album that was so important and earth-shattering, it would become the defining record in the career of the most infamous band in all reality. The album was Scumdogs of the Universe, and in the three decades that have followed, this magical tome has never been performed in its entirety. October 30th, 2020, that will change. Guar will be teaming up with some very special guests to play every song off this landmark album and beaming it around the world. Will the Earth survive? Buy your tickets now and find out on Devil's Night. Dogs, triple X live. Yeah, we making a porno dog. No, it's not triple X. It's the Roman numeral 30. It's the 30th anniversary of the release of our album, Scum Dogs of the Universe. And to celebrate, we're going to play every song off it and stream it over the interwebs. Wow, every song off Scum Dogs? That doesn't even seem possible. Why? I mean, the songs aren't really that hard. No, because it was a totally different band back then. Flatus is gone. Odorous is gone. There's a whole gaggle of scum dogs back then that I ain't never even met. It ain't gonna be the same. Well, I'm pretty sure I can get Sleazy to come back and sing Slaughterama. Who knows? Maybe I have a few more surprises up my sleeve. Up your sleeve? Tell me! Tell me! The suspense is killing me! But you don't even have any sleeves! Where you got them in your wristband? <laughs> anyway, Lothar had a very enlightening conversation with Killing Joe's legendary lead singer, Jazz Coleman. Let's check it out. Ladies and gentlemen, he is Jazz Coleman. He is the vocalist and one of the giant creative brains behind Killing Joke, which is probably the all-time, greatest all-time punk industrial hard rock <laughs> band in history. And I'm not even, that's not even uh, hyperbole there. A band that had a great influence on Guar has been a favorite of mine since 1980. Uh, Odorous Urungus, our former singer, loved Killing Joke, Ballsack, Bone Snapper, all the guys, the drummer, Jismack, everybody, huge fans of Killing Joke. Uh, Jazz is also a composer of orchestral and choral, uh, I guess you'd call it art music. Uh, I don't know what you call it, really. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> modern <life>. classical, <laughs> right, modern yeah, classical. classical music, yeah. uh, so just to start off, it's good to see you again. We spoke at it's, Riot Fest. And, that's right, that's yeah, right, sitting on the couch, I remember it well. And yeah, we tried that, to do before that, we actually did a concert, I seem to remember, back in the 80s somewhere. We did, yes, we did. We played with thousands, the <laughs> thousands of you then. It must have been about 15, 16 people on stage, I think, with Guar then. But yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. right. That was back, I think, you on the Extremities tour for you that's guys. Right on the Extremities tour. Well, that's um, 30 years ago. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> but, I mean, and there's a lot of years for it to be. I mean, so, Jazz, it's the, the 40th anniversary of Killing Joke. Well, actually, it's the 42nd anniversary of Killing Joke, but it's the 40th anniversary of our... Uh, yeah, yeah, there's, yeah, it's the 42nd day. We started in 78, right? Oh, it okay. It was the last year the French used the guillotine. <laughs> it, it's not that long ago. Hey. You're right, it's not. <laughs> yeah. So maybe, yeah. maybe when they say 40, maybe they're talking about the album Killing Joke. Yeah, I think they're talking about the albums, yeah. Uh, yeah. The, uh, that was 40 years ago. Yeah, but it's 42 years for us, just like that, hey. Wow, yeah, <laughs> amazing. And, and, and here it is, the world is going off the rails, uh, it mm -hmm. seems like. Uh, uh, you, know, you, you have a song, a new project and, uh, called Black and Red, and yeah. you have a song called On the Day the Earth Went Mad. Uh, and, you know, I just want to, I mean, that's so appropriate. The song just really evokes this cultural and historical moment. What do you see going on in the world right now, Jazz? I know you're a guy who said you were hardwired against fascism. That's right. Well, uh, what you've got to remember is, is, is that um, nothing in the geopolitical stage happens by accident. That's the first thing. So uh, when I look at the, the event like uh, the coronavirus, um, events i call it an event because it's staged it's manufactured uh, you know you can go back and look at um, 
the United uh, States Air Force uh, manual owning the weather by 2020. That, 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 that came online, I think, about six or seven years ago. Um, uh, so nothing surprises me. If you can look at the Rockefeller Foundation uh, lockstep, uh, yeah, all of this is completely staged the way I see it. And uh, everything is on track for global governance uh, 2030. <laughs> Mason Temple, reporter here. Uh, you've caught me in my, my vast archive, uh, and I'm looking for a, mm, a particular volume of lore for this week's episode. Oh, oh, here it is. Ooh, this is a good one. Mm, yes. Mm. <coughs> <coughs> this week's episode is called Welcome to New Jersey. Mason Temple, Embedded Guar Reporter here with another Guar History Minute. I got a lot of positive hate mail from Guar fans concerning my History Minute subject matter. To set the record straight, the first episode was about drugs, the second episode was about New Jersey, and to really change it up, this week's episode is about drugs in New Jersey. Let us now hearken back again to Guar's earliest days, where the band flew from gig to gig in their patch-shaped helicopter, but their human slaves were forced to drive from club to club in a decrepit school bus. Or, if it was broken, as it often was, whatever vehicles they could steal, such as work vans. Such is the case in tonight's story, as I was sent by Fox News to cover Guar playing the famous Pyramid Club in New York City. The gig went exceedingly well, and Guar killed 95% of the crowd. The human slaves and myself escaped the carnage barely, and began the trip back to Richmond, Virginia, on the New Jersey Turnpike. I was traveling in a van with Hunter Jackson, human slave to Techno Destructo, Chuck Varga, human slave to this executioner, and Mike Dirks, human slave to Ballsack. The van we were in had an unusual amount of play in the steering. Hunter was driving, and as the rain and wind picked up, it took considerable control to keep the van in a straight line. As we careened down the turnpike, I, sitting in the front seat between Hunter and Chuck looked in the rearview mirror and saw the flashing lights of a police car. Hunter, I shouted, the cops! Hunter replied, they're just after somebody. They'll pass us. Moments later, they were still behind us, siren wailing. Again, I said, Hunter, police. He responded again, they're not after us. By the time he acknowledged the police were indeed after us, the officers were none too pleased. Shining flashlights into the van windows, the officers were met with makeup smeared, blood stained faces. The two policemen, let's call them Joe Pesci and Fred Gwynn, were textbook good cop, bad cop characters. As we tried to explain our appearance, they peppered us with questions that we had no way of answering. Uh, so, what you're saying is that that's not real blood on you. Uh, so, you guys like a band, huh? Uh, you guys like the Monty Lemon Drops or something? Who's the one playing? Then they got to the real point. Joe Pesci got extremely aggravated. Uh, you guys got any drugs on you? No? You sure? Well, we're gonna search the van, so you better tell us now. No? Well, I had a buddy cop who searched the van, and they said they didn't have drugs, but they did, and he got flicked by a hair with me. And when he got flicked, he got AIDS and he died. So I figure if I search this van and I get flicked by a needle, that I'm gonna just die anyway. So I'm gonna kill all of you. The saddest part, beyond the grading poverty, sickness and death threats was, we had no drugs. They persisted. Uh, what's in the back? Nothing, we insisted. These top-notch gum shoes were sure they would find a mountain of cocaine in the back, but upon opening the rear doors, they were met with a semi-conscious, urine-stained, fluoridden form of Mike Burks, <coughs> a broken guitar, and a steamer trunk full of rubber dicks. Thoroughly disappointed, they left us with a stern warning. Uh, don't let us catch you guys in New Jersey again. Guar played Trent, New Jersey, the very next weekend to a sold-out show, and nobody got flicked. <laughs> Smooth! Oh, oh yes. Mm. Well, that's it for this week. Tune in next time for another Mason Temple's Core History Minute. <laughs>
you've got me, Mason Temple, uh, here in my vast score cause. And I'm looking for a particular volume here. Oh, where is it? Uh, uh, oh, 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 here it is. Oh, oh. Referred to as the Book of Lies. Oh, oh, check it out next week on Mason Temple's Gore History Minute. The end. Hey, that's right. This is Jizmat coming back at you one more again with another cocktail corner. Leave some happiness on me, so the brighter side you'll see. No more loneliness to be. Leave some happiness on me. I'm sitting around today, uh, getting drunk with my buddy Mark the Shark. His uh, name is Mark, and he likes Maker's Mark bourbon, known for its classic. Uh, red wax drip uh, bottle top and neck. Mark the Shark likes it because I think his name is in the title. Mark the Shark, Maker's Mark. We've been drinking on the 46 cast strength today. That's been pretty delicious. Uh, I might step away from the camera to get another one of these drinks. What do you think, Mark? Yeah, you want one too? All right. This other one's kind of interesting. It's a... Uh, barrel select and it's a hint of chocolate i'm not big on chocolate and neither is mark but if you're new to bourbon drinking you might want to try this one but what i'm really getting excited about with maker's mark is this new release it's coming out right now about october it's maker's mark 101 this is a 101 proof uh, version of their staple brand um, it's really good i'm gonna take a little sip here I'm gonna give Mark a little sip. He loves this stuff. You're kidding. And now, deep states with swap. When have bad day, chin up. Remember, not your fault. Satanic lizard people, pedophile ring to blame. Bill Gates. Pizza Gates, Bill Pizza Gates, get it or no, math. Wow! Greetings, Bohab, Sleazy P. Martini here. <laughs> yes, I know Guam. Listen, you want Guam merchandise? I got the perfect place for you. <laughs> Incidentally, it has to be going by the same name, Guam.net. That's right, go there right now. Get the new Scum Dogs 30th Anniversary Box Set Remix, Remastered Scum Dogs of the Universe. Full of all kinds of crap. Giant coasters and, and stickers and, and uh, comic books and uh, lyric sheets and uh, condoms and prophylactics and uh, I don't know. And then we got t-shirts. Check this one out. Eh? Not bad. Don't forget, Bohabs, Qua.net. All your merchandise needs are right there. One place. All at once. Finger click away. There's a, there's a government, uh, a shadow government, a trilateral and Bilderberg group, but the, the CFR basically runs the show and uh, there is no democracy. I've, I've had disturbing images of, of the future throughout my life. I am what is known as precognitive. Uh, uh, mandatory vaccinations, everything's in there. We're heading towards uh, transhumanism, synthetic biology, and slavery. You'll have two different species. You'll have you'll have access to life extension programs, increasing your IQ to 600 plus. They'll be like they'll look visibly different. And, and this is all London School of Economics stuff. This is no sort of conspiracy theory. This is what, what's happening. Uh, each one of us is saturated with nanotechnology. Expel. The nanotechnology in your body is called the red wine spit test. And it, it, all, all these fibers come out and on closer inspection of these fibers, you can see symbols and stuff. Inside your body is nanotechnology that's owned by somebody else. You are technically owned by corporate forces, biotech forces already. There is no law. It's actually screaming madness now. We can't talk about 5G and its harmful effects of the mandatory irradiation of homo sapien. Let's think of um, a concept like systematic disengagement, transnationalization, a neo-Bolshevik moment. Well, just think about that for a second. 
America has never been out of a state a state of emergency since 9-11. We, we know this. We know that every man, woman and child across the planet is, is spied upon by the NSA. And so we identify all the problems, all the central bankers. You're on a list. You're on a list. I don't want to be on a You're list. The ones that should worry. Mandatory sterilization. We're at the darkest hour now. The biosphere will be plenished. We shall witness the regeneration of nature. The major religions are all still patristic. They are apocalyptic. Quantum physics. That we are all participants in creating our own reality. In the Pentagon, there's a lot of religious nutcases. All men are equal. There's a hidden system of hierarchy in the world that nobody wants to talk about. Because he was part of the super lodges, of which there's 36. This guy, Bono, thinks that he is the spokesman of a generation and that he's cozying up to the next incoming power of complete fascism when i find i'm the one of the few people speaking out uh, and there's no one around me in the arts speaking out about 9 11 speaking out about chemtrails speaking out about the technotronic fascism that is actually taken over everywhere Too comfortable. Don't no. get too comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Dirk Darlington. Welcome to a special edition of Fox News Double Talk with Dirk Darlington. I'm your host, Dirk Darlington. This week, we discuss new Democrat-backed legislation in California. A new law has been passed that makes underage prostitution no longer a crime in the Sunshine State. We have with us to debate this controversial act from California's 12th District, Congressman Joe Lipschitz, Democrat. Well, thank you very much for having me here, Dirk. It's a pleasure. Shut up. We also have joining us newly appointed chairwoman for the Center for Missing and Sexploited Children. Direct from her appearance as an honored guest at the Republican National Convention, Miss Karen Whiteman. Well, thanks for having me back, Derek. That's uh, Dirk. The radical left has gone too far this time. They've legalized pedophilia. You want to diddle a 12 year old? Head on out to California. It's open season for baby raping. <laughs> That's simply not true, Dirk. If My you'll... name is Dirk. Monster! Pound save our children! Pound human trafficking! Pound preschool prostitutes! Pound baby eaters! Pound? Are, are you trying to say hashtag? No, it, it's for the internet. You have to put a pound sign first or it won't go to the internet. Yeah, uh, that's called a hashtag. Don't mansplain me, dick. It's Dirk. Pound me too! <laughs> Please, come on now. If you'll just take a cursory glance at the wording of the law, you'll clearly see that the intent <laughs> is to protect children. The legislation shifts the criminality from the minor to the pimps and the johns that have been exploiting and abusing these young people. Oh, we don't want to see these dudes punished by the law. We should be doing everything in our power to protect these poor souls that have been entrapped by the sex trade. Lies! You're trying to protect your Hollywood homeboys, Tom Hanks, Guar, and the Clintons. You're in on it too. You're a goddamn leftist elitist pedophile. Oh, come on, this is goddamn ridiculous. Are you gonna let her slander me like that, Dirk? It's, uh, oh, well, she does make some good points. Oh, for fuck's sake. Science, mortals! What the hell? Who are you? Look, mister, we've only got room for two guests here on Double Talk. It's Q, the great and powerful Q, the speaker of unknown answers, the teller of truths not yet imagined, all bow and worship the great and almighty Q. I now control your televisions. I control the internet. Only I have the answers you seek. Follow me, follow me down the rabbit hole and all will become clear. So you're Q, founder of the QAnon movement. 
Why do you keep your face hidden and why do you hide behind a curtain of anonymity? An anonym an an why don't you want people to know what you look like? I am Q. Listen to my words and let your will, your reason drift away into the ether. Logic has no value here. As you listen to my voice, you can hear no other truth than mine. You are growing sleepy, sleepy. Wow. Oh, I, I guess that's all the time we have this week. I'm Don, 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 no. I'm Dirk, Dirk Darlington, and this is Fox News. Fox News, where when you're right, the only truth that matters is the word of Q. Where, where am I? Jerry, are we ready to roll? What? What? Fake news. Cops is filmed on location with the X-Men and women of law enforcement. Cop is a tough, tough thing. You never know what's gonna happen. Wow, who the hell is that? Oh God, thank God she's of age. That's the first one this week. You talking to me? I don't see anybody else around here. Yeah, you are talking to me, boy. I had to pants the Dallas Symphony last night. I didn't think I was ever gonna make it home. I need a drink, a big drink. Kids, take note of this. If you wanna be healthy like me, you follow this regiment every day. Breakfast of Champions. What the hell is this shit? One more time! <laughs> Deep States with Swab. Sick of Computer Spy? 
Put sticky on camera. No more peepers. Only swab does peep. Alone. At dark times. In tree. Above. Drip sticky on those below. Oops. But wow. Wow. Earthenoids, time for your puny meat brains to explode from all the awesomeness. It's time for Boabs of the Week. Now this Bohab, sure enough, posted a video of himself at a gua show. Let's watch! Fuck this place! Fuck this place! Indeed! Fuck this place! Fuck this place! Keep it going! Fuck this place! Fuck this place! Yes, proving that his ravenous devotion to Guar is unmatched by any other Bohab. Well, you know what time it is. Now it's time for death. <laughs> this tiny Bohab, Aiden, his mom Jessica posted this picture of him in a nifty homemade Guar t-shirt. Good job, mom. Started this youngling on the path of worshiping the scum dogs. Can't wait to see your next t shirt, Aiden. Now, be gone with you. <laughs> this wannabe Rune 2 player and latex rubber enthusiast, Daniel, he has something to say. So let's hear it, human. Tell me, what do you got to say? In the keep of Gua, much torment remained, despite all the bodies hacked and twain. So many had died in the vicious campaign that the femurs alone made a fine mountain. The master was no longer Gua sovereign. Of wealth and women they had none to gain. What goal was left for them to attain? So odorous did call for conclave. First came Balsack, his counsel was wise, his war axe gleamed, he was a loyal knight, plus forty dancing bears he did provide. First in prowess, he stood his lord beside, Take the mighty, his ass was wide, brought eighty laden oxen, he was a good ally. Jismak the gusher, his legion was the stride, for many hours he barked at the tribe, but then timely the catering arrived. Booze, drugs, food, bonded you a long time, that is Maximus, this he did oh, supply, and now the mighty brothers of Gwar did buy. Oh yeah, enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, well, remembering that mouthful of marbles, that was impressive. So, I will kill you quickly. Take this! <laughs> so there you have it, mortal filth. Remember, post your photos and videos to Twitter and Instagram, tag at war, and use the hashtag Bohabs for Life. Remember to post your videos, mostly videos, Tell me why you should be Bohab of the Week. Now that your brains have leaked out of your ear holes, I will put you Habs out of your misery. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I can't believe it. That was a completely acceptable show. Uh, let's not get carried away. It was almost subpar. Yeah, high five. All right. <laughs> That's why I set the bar so low. Anywho, in the words of Otis Urungus, I got a comet to catch. Smell you later. Have fun with your presidents and your civil war and your pandemics. I'm out. Peace. Uh, don't worry. He'll be back. If there's one thing I know about Guar, it's that their schemes to escape the Earth never work. Well, I'll see you next time on Undead from Antarctica. Live. Whatever. <laughs> Alright! 
Came on the parking lot. Honk if you're horny, motherfuckers. Come on, yes. It's an utter silence. We want to cause a civic disturbance. It's got a police line going ahead. This song's for the dudes over in the Salvation Army Rehab Center, which is right over there. It's called Fuck This Place. Go ahead, feel good. Keep it tight. All the guys down in the city jail.
still doing here? I don't know. What are you still doing? Oh, you're supposed to be hosting this. What is this? Well, this is like our after show party, right? So why? Is, why, why I is it a party? Or... I don't know. Do we get? You don't got anything in there. Don't worry. I brought. I brought my pink wine. Oh, good. Pink girl wine again. Can you? Uh, you got that? You're not being very socially distant here. I got my <laughs> mask on. Quit it. <laughs> Good thing Antarctica I'm is coming. still still the only continent on the world without a case of COVID. That's why I let you cough on me like that. Yeah, thanks. How's everybody doing tonight? Was that episode not mind blowing? It was mind blowing, right? Why don't you push those like buttons and tell me how much you like that episode? Come on, it's worth a like. Come on, at least one, two, three. I don't know. Wish the thumbs down if you want to see... Nothing. Something? What? What are you going to say? I don't know. I got nothing. Oh, gee. Well, look, look, look. What does everybody, what does everybody have to say here? What do we got here? Uh, Richard wants to know, so who the hell is Q? That's, that's a secret. It's a, he's mysterious, isn't he? He's a mysterious character, that Q. But maybe he'll be making reoccurring... Um, appearances in late episodes. Really? We might find out. Oh, that'd be cool. I want to find out who Q is, too. Yeah. Um, let's see. Maggot Emma says, I'm hungover and still disappointed that the episode didn't cure the hangover. Well, the episode... We didn't say that it would cure the hangover, Maggot Emma. We never made any promises to I begin with. I, I, it cured my hangover. Yeah. Yeah, You're working I, on another? I drank the whole way through it. That's the only way to cure your hangover there, Emma. Well, that's... You're not old enough to know this. You're not <laughs> old enough to be hungover either. What the hell are you... Go to bed. <laughs> Don't put that little girl to bed. <laughs> oh, let's see. Who else? Robots with Coffee says that was great. Thank you, Robots with Coffee. Yes, we agree with you wholeheartedly. Uh, let's see. Max... Spoez says, he told me I must be an 11-year-old retard. Who said that? Him? Was it this guy? Sounds like something I would say, but uh, I don't remember it. Oh, wait. Tranny Fluid says, surprise. Q is Michael Jackson. I'm pretty sure you're wrong there, Tranny Fluid. Oh, well, there you go. See? Straight from the... Straight it's from boss though. I, I, don't, I don't believe Michael Jackson is actually dead. I think that's... We're talking conspiracies. He's not. That's what this show has become, apparently. And yes. Some sleazy's taking over with, with a new conspiracy show. Yeah, I mean, I think Michael Jackson is in outer space. He's probably on the moon. Is he? He, 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 he likes to do the, like that walk. Um, walk yeah. He likes to walk on the moon. Here, I'm going to put my pink wine in my gourd. So Whoa, my look, it's salad. an innovation. No one will know that I'm not drinking coffee. <laughs> Let's see. Sure enough, says Salborg got quite the production value for his segment. Yeah, I guess he keeps, you know, keeps all the cash, all that Dogecoin coming his way. Yeah, I think he's actually paying his editors. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> what else we got here? Uh, yes, Gadzu, the virus. Uh, Sleazy does know a lot of stuff. He's a pretty... Smart human. Oh, look, Tosco says uh, the Zordos deep cut. The penis is bad. Q is good. <laughs> Sleazy Q Martini. That's a, that's an interesting. Sleazy Q piece. Martini. What? Q's head was kind of odd. It was big. It was bigger. So yeah. I don't know who's that big? But, but that's a good. Question. That's a good. I like. I like where you're going with that. We, we got to do some investigation to find out who this Q cat is. Let's see. Colin Marks says, Elvis ain't dead. He's frozen beneath Coney Island, uh, waiting for the day he could return to his new robot body. Yes? that's a, the, Everybody knows that, right? I mean, you knew that, right? I, I was zoned out for a second there. What, what, what did you uh, it, was, it wasn't important. Drink more wine. It started to sound like a, a jazz Coleman. I, I, you know, <laughs> hey, that, that interview was pretty stellar. And that again, terrifying. I mean, it is. It's mostly terrifying. If you, we didn't want to scare the hell out of you people, so that's why we didn't play the whole thing. No, because 
you can go watch the whole thing on YouTube, what, in a couple of days? Yeah, it's not up there yet, but once it goes up there, don't watch it because your brain will melt. Yes, it will, it'll ooze out. It'll ooze out of your ear. Uh, Bella wants to know what's your favorite song to play on guitar. What is it? Uh, I don't know. Uh, Kumbaya, I think, right? No. No? Uh, uh, Baby's Got Back. Yeah. Yeah. Play on guitar. <laughs> Let's see. Evil One's up for a drinking game. All right, Evil One, what are the rules? What are the rules for the drinking game? How about I get drunk every time somebody asks a stupid question? Oh, like, crap. Oh, oh, just oh, just oh. keep drinking. Just, yeah. Oh, if, if you've ever watched the movie Bloodsport, drink every time they say Kumite, and you will, you will actually probably die if you do that. How many times they say Kumite in that movie? You will fucking die. But what is a Kumite? It's a, it's a fighting, it's an underground fighting tournament that some American guy lied about. Van Damme played him in the blood sport. It was cool. And he like, Hayad, this other dude. It was pretty cool. And he won the Kumite. Oh, wait, no, he didn't. I didn't want to spoil it. Oh, crap, I told you the movie. Oh, uh, what's the... Uh, what's the appropriate number of strings to have on a guitar, Goro wants to know? <laughs> Anything over six is ridiculous and you should be shot. <laughs> you <laughs> should be shot. Anything under six, you should also be shot. I'm talking to you, bass players. <laughs> Four <laughs> strings is all you can handle. You can handle. Oh, but if you're a bass player and you play with anything more than four, you should also be shot. <laughs> wow, there's lots of rules there's here. There's a lot of rules. There's a lot of rules for strings. I went to school for music theory, and most of it involves shooting people. <laughs> <laughs> shooting people left and right. Oh, that's good. Oh, let's see. Favorite Rick and Morty episode, Matron, Dylan wants to know. Yeah, all of all, all of them. First one. What's that? You like the first, the first one? one got yeah, that first one is pretty cool with Odorous and Beefcake. But in it. I'm not in it, so I fucking hate that one. What? I like the newest one, which I'll be in. Wait, I'm not going to be in it. Oh, uh, it's you're in it, but you're behind the camera. Yeah. You filmed it. Yeah. You filmed the animation. It was cool. Uh, let's see. Nate wants to say, "My dad says your music is weird. What should I do with him?" Music is weird, and you should probably go to a father-son picnic. <laughs> I mean, constructive. Very constructive. Yeah. Well, wait. I guess we, we, we wanted to talk about some, like, reminiscing, right? So, wasn't there, like, an old contest that was, like, on MTV? Oh, oh yeah, this is funny. Is anybody, there actually, I was watched, there was a documentary about what MTV was, because kids don't even know what MTV is. What, what, what is MTV? You guys, hit, mash that thumbs, mash the smiley face if you know what MTV is. Yes. It was. Is there still MTV? I don't know. Is it's MTV a thing, thing still? Right. Who knows? But no anyway. So no one knows what MTV was. So so what, what was this thing that we're going to show people? This is a commercial with Bill from Bill and Ted. Yeah? Dressed in drag. And it's funny. It's funny. It so so here we go. We'll go ahead and watch this funny. And I'll go, hee hee. The ultimate barbarian rock spectacle is on tour. Soon they're coming to your town. And now MTV is running a guar size contest. Send in your postcards today and you could win the chance to sacrifice your daughter to guar. Well, I wonder who that could be. <laughs> It's war! We've come for your daughter. <laughs> You've never won anything before. Where's the girl? <laughs> She's upstairs. Follow me. But then she says, and then I'm like... Your whole family will be picked up in a limo and driven to Guar show. There you'll be the toast of the evening as your very own flesh and blood is honored on stage. And we'll even throw in three commemorative t-shirts your family will cherish for years. So send your postcards today. And who knows? Your little darling might end up as... Guar food! Guar food! it! Guar food! We need more guar food! Yes! Now we're going to get sued by Viacom. Oh, great. There we go. Oh, well. 
Well, you know, whatever. Who cares? So yeah, that was cool, right? So that was uh, uh, what's his name? Alex Winter, right? Alex Winter, yes. He was the, the mom. Indian box. Uh, that was a uh, Tom Stern. Stern. Yeah, yeah, that was cool, right? The idiot box. Look it up. It's probably on YouTube. The, the idiot it's box was good. Great, uh, sketch comedy show by by Alex Winter and Tom Stern that was on MTV back in the dickety dickety nineteen dicketies. Yep. Nineteen diggities. That's a number. Funny stuff. And I'm gonna go look up what the winner of the feed your daughter to girl contest is doing. Yeah, who's that? We need to find her. Yeah. Or did she die? She got ground up. Oh, yeah. I can't remember. So yes. Anyways, what else do you people have to say on the Sunday night after we blew your fucking minds with that amazing episode? What do you think? What did you think about it? I don't see enough people mushing that like button. I see more likes. I need to see it go up. Up and up and up. We haven't got a single thumbs down. What? We're afraid. Do we no. got a... No. Give Where's a, the... Give me a thumbs down and I will chug this whole bottle. Don't do it because he wants to do it. Don't do it because he wants to do it. No, no. Don't give him what he wants. Don't do it. Well, I mean, don't hit me. All right. Um. <laughs> where were we? What, oh, we're, asking, we're answering questions. Yes. Okay, let's see. Who would make a ba a better baby brother? Arnold Jackson from Different Strokes or E.T.? Sean wants to know. That's a good one. Yeah, I, I've, I've met Arnold. I never met E.T. So do you think he'd be your good baby brother, though? Arnold would be a great baby brother, even though he's older. <laughs> and, and, and he got molested by a bicycle guy. Yeah. Oh, that was sad. Oh, poor... Oh, no, it wasn't him. It was his friend. His friend got molested. Arnold would also make a great alien. I think we should do a movie with him. <laughs> yeah, Arnold. As the alien. We could ride bikes together and, and fly past the moon. And Arnold Schwarzenegger could play him. No? no? Okay, never mind. Well, uh, let's see. Is there... Okay, Dylan wants to know, is any Guar Slave vegan vegetarian Guar Bar menu... Is friendly as fuck, and I appreciated it. He he wants to say he appreciates the menu. Uh, no one in the band is vegetarian or vegan, obviously, because we eat raw humans. But unfortunately, a lot of the crew are vegan and care about the planet and their health and all that stupid stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're about Chumps. to make money, so we we sell the stuff that the you know, the kids are into these days, and they like all think that. They like kale yeah. and garnish. You just want to put garnish on a plate and give but it to But what them. we do do at Guar Bar is we make vegetarian food the least healthy thing on the, on the menu. So we, we trick <laughs> Deep fried there. vegetarian yeah. vegan. Deep fried cauliflower. And <laughs> How much battered butter deep friedness can you put onto it? Butter's not good. Ah, well, let's see. Uh... Yes, the chicken and waffle sandwich is the best, uh, Grandpa Nurgle. Yes, it's pretty good. Uh, vegan ranch was bad. <laughs> let's see. All right. Ask me a question about, uh, let's say, how about a movie? What, what, what does, uh, uh, ask me a question about a movie, and then I'll, I'll ask him. Uh, I won't know. I won't and he know. won't know, but he'll, he'll answer it in a funny way. Oh, yeah. Yes, you will. Anyways, uh, yes, there are lots of vegan uh, uh, options, and uh, they're all unhealthy. <laughs> no, Emma, we don't have chicken tenders. We got uh, chicken McDuckets. We make our own nuggets out of duck, duck. and chicken and uh, whatever, whoever's hand gets stuck in the grinder that day. Yeah, usually a few fingers make it in there. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, Chad. Chad is the Terminator. Oh, Chad Byrne, yes. Is Terminator a prequel to The Matrix? Oh, uh, yes, possibly. I, I, I can see that correlation. I think that's a correct, correct, yes. So I haven't watched all the Terminator movies. I just watched the new Dark uh, Fate today. Yes. And so they just, like, say we don't care about the storyline. Whatever no, they they, they jammed a whole bunch of storylines together. Like no, none of it. It doesn't flow together. I mean, 
if you're going to do a time traveling series, you have to have like, no. they have to, like fit together, and none no. of the Terminator ones work. It's all like it's all paradoxical bullshit. You could do whatever you want with it. I don't like that. I you don't could, like that. You can. You could do whatever time tra time yeah. travel. You could do anything. Like Spaceballs, that's a time travel movie that fits in with all other time travel movies. Yes, Dylan G, I love Spaceballs. Yes, yeah, Spaceballs is an amazing movie. It's a documentary. <laughs> oh yes, Artemis, I have seen the color of uh, color of outer, outer space. space. Yes, it's good, very good. Cthulhu, Lovecraftian, good times. Yeah, even watching um, uh, Cthulhu Country. Oh, I haven't seen it yet. What? So good, what? so good. I mean, you what? had me cleaning all the toilets what? the other night. I can't do everything. Right. I mean, you guys, you, you've seen the toilets, right? Yeah. You barely even got anything in the toilets. It's all over the walls. It's in the sink. It's up on the ceiling. I mean, eh, I'm lucky if I can watch any of the movies. Uh, Let's see. Hold on. Uh, Okay. Grandpa Nurgle says Critters was is awesome. Yes, Critters is a good movie. I like the first two for sure. Uh, Doctor Strangelove, yes, Matthew Bullock, that's a masterpiece. What do you think? Yeah, we're gonna do an hour on Doctor Strangelove. I mean, we could we could talk about Strangelove for a whole hour easily. It's what? probably my favorite Kubrick movie, and I did some weird stuff, but that was one. He didn't do enough comedy, you know. Yes. He needed to do more comedies. But, uh, yeah, uh, of course, everybody knows America Must Be Destroyed, the song. Tons of strange love samples from that. For sure. Yeah, Love, love Crack Country is good. Grandpa and Nurgle. Uh, don't pay for it. I think it's on, like, a paid channel. Just get a friend to, like, steal stuff and get it for free, and it's great then. <laughs> good one, good one. I'm, yeah, don't ever pay for anything online unless it's the Gore live streaming show on October 30th. Oh, yes, that's coming up, right? Yeah, let's, uh, we got some, something we can show about that. Oh, maybe we do, let's see. <laughs> King of Segways. 30 years ago, Gore released their defining album, Scum Dogs of the Universe. This October 30th, for the very first time in history, Gore will perform this album in its entirety in a live streaming concert that can be viewed around the world. Get your tickets to this once-in-a-lifetime event now. Oh, yes, yes. That's going to be great. Can't wait to do that one. It's going to be a good time. It's pretty exciting. I mean, um, I, I've been practicing really hard to learn all the songs from Scum Dogs and their... Ridiculously easy. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, the ridiculously it's... easy. <laughs> oh, oh, yes, Natalie. I do remember Clockwork Orange. That's a, uh, another good movie with uh, Malcolm McDowell, which uh, I did have an opportunity to talk to him for a moment. He was a good fellow. He was a nice fellow. A did you talk fellow? to him? He yeah, he's a famous dude. He's very I was good. good fellows. He... Wait, what? I think if we were in Goodfellas together, I would have talked. I would have spoken with Malcolm McDowell. You would have. You would have. I would have if we were in Goodfellas <laughs> together. So I think you're wrong. I think. I think I, I am think wrong. Either one of us was. It in was Joe Pesci. Oh. oh wait, no, Joe Pesci was in uh, Car Fifty Four, if I remember right. Uh, at least that. At least that episode tonight proved he he was in Car Fifty Four. People were asking about the special guest for uh, the. Scum Dogs Live, and I think I should just blow it all right now. Even though we've got Whoa. everything's like set up, it's like we've got this plan, we've got managers now, we've got everything set up, we're going to tell you all the secrets, but I'm going to spill the beans right now and tell you. What? What? Uh, huh. Whew! He passed out quick enough. Well, I don't know shit, so, you know, he knows it all. So, anyways. That's going to be on Devil's Night. That's correct. It's going to be awesome. You should all get your tickets as soon as possible because it's going to be a lot of fun. And we can't wait to do it. What? Apparently. What? <laughs> hey, I got some tricks up my sleeve, buddy. Come on. <laughs> Whoa. More. Don't hit me. Well, let's see what we've got here. 
Any other good fun times? Any other questions you want to ask Balsack while he's here and still slightly sober? Anything else? You can ask him right now. Yes, uh, Hindo Balls, Troll 2. Yes, I don't think that's very Troll 2 y because it actually happens about goblins, right? I much prefer Troll 1. Troll, troll 1. Yes. Yeah, Trolls. The prequel to Troll 2. <laughs> well, the prequel. <laughs> God, <Yes>. woo! <laughs> so, let's see. Uh, let's see, Tosco. Fun fact about Dr. Strangelove. Kubrick was unbearable for the weeks because he wanted a green table for the shelter to stim uh, simulate a poker game. The movie is in black and white. <laughs> so, yeah, he had to have a green table in the, in there, <laughs> and it's all black and white. That's pretty funny. Oh, uh, what else? Uh, Balsack, is your how's your health doing? We want you around to torture us stupid humans. Uh, says Beowulf. How's your health? How you doing? How you feel? Got the COVID? I, I I don't I don't think I have the COVID. I don't know. I got my flu shot. I got my pneumonia shot. Pneumonia shot. Yeah, I had pneumonia. Pneumonia. Yeah. Did what? Didn't you date her for a minute? I've never dated no one named Pneumonia. Oh man. Well, anyway. <laughs> but either way, whether I'm alive or dead, I'm not going to torture you, uh, Beowulf, because <laughs> I don't like you. I only torture people I like. So. <laughs> <laughs> what a weird, what a weird way to deal with people. I only torture people I like. Okay. More fun. Oh, uh, I guess it's more fun that way. Yes. Oh, uh, what else? Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, Carson wants to say, cartoon, you can do it. I guess you mean a Gore cartoon, huh? You think we can do a Gore cartoon? I can't, but we should have one done for us by someone who can draw things. I thought you drew things, Matt. I, Why don't you draw I, us a damn cartoon? I'll draw a cartoon after I get done I don't draw cleaning stuff. the goddamn bathrooms of the slave pit. I just drink and play guitar. There's feces everywhere. You don't want... We can we could hire a maid, and you could do a cartoon. All too. right, well, I guess that'd be cool. Oh, another. Oh, now we're hiring maids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're big rock stars. We got money to throw around on cleaning toilets. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see. A uh, slimy slickle says, "How how did Balzac's face melt if it's cold in Antarctica? How'd your face melt?" Oh, you mean the jaws? They went from, like, steel to this crackled shit. Uh, if you read the comic book, um, I can't remember the name of it. Yeah, they, they got mutated by the time stream. See, time travel does fucking fixes everything. That's why I hate time travel. You can do travels. whatever what you want with time travel. That goddamn Mr. Perfect. Damn you, Sarah Connor. Sarah Connor, Bill and Ted, Doctor Who. No, I, I, I uh, 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 melted uh, and my... My shoulder pads got all melty and moldy after I killed Mr. Perfect. Yeah, he, he absorbed part of Mr. Perfect in him. Yeah. I wonder if anything bad will ever become of that. Hmm. We'll just have to see, huh? I don't know. Well, <laughs> none of this stuff ever pays off. I've been reading our storylines for decades. <laughs> you people don't know. Anyways, look. I think we're going to get the hell out of here. Uh, we've Blown your minds properly for this evening. And uh, again, it's going to be Undead Live next weekend. Not Undead from Antarctica, which we'll get back onto a regular schedule because of the drive in show. A few people were wondering why it was tonight and not last weekend. Wait, wait, wait. So you're saying I only have three weeks to do the next episode of Undead? Yes. You look, you you did this. We did. We could have done it last weekend, but we were doing a driving show. Let's not make any problem. Let's just say that Undead Live will be back next month sometime. Like oh, that. no promises. I like it. I, I don't want to work well with schedules and timetables. No, I don't. Punch, Obviously, I don't punch time clocks. I punch slaves. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Right. Oh. So, where, what were we talking about? I, I can't. Oh, yes. We're wrapping this show up. So, 
again on Dead Live next weekend. And we'll see who the hell's going to host it. I don't know. Possibly some Glor... Yeah, Glor guy. I'll just get one of them. These guys, uh, you guys, you guys should host it. Anyways. Grandpa Nurgle is hosting the show next month. <laughs> You're hired, Gramps. Yeah. Boss that character. Anyways, look, we got to get the hell out of here. So we're going to play you out on a classic Glor tune. And uh, you got anything on say? Uh, we might play this song in the live stream on the 30th. Ooh. This, this song's on Scumbag Tree. Yes, it's correct. All right, well. Okay. Whatever. We're yeah. out of here. <laughs>